We're live. We're live. Better get my T.D. Jake scarf out here. <laughs> Might need it. Okay, yeah. Here, I won't need this. What? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Daggone, they done started praying over me. I done got hot. <laughs> Whew, they done lit a fire, a far, lit a far under me. I kind of got that T.D. Jake sweat going on up here. T.D.U. 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 That's the inside joke for CBU, y'all don't worry. That's going to be globally known. I don't, I don't know how that come out that day, but it did come out. Uh, all right, guys. Let's go to the Lord in prayer here, and we'll get started. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord, for bringing us here tonight, God. And Father, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for this message I'm about to speak on, Lord. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that it will teach us, Lord, and show us, Father God, that you are the one true God, and everything you say and do, Lord, stands forever. God, we thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here, Lord, and Father, we thank you for the ones that are listening on Facebook and wherever else we're broadcasting, God. We just thank you so much. Father, watch over us, Lord, open our eyes and hearts, hide me behind the cross, and Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will rain down, rain down on this place like never before. Ooh, In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, just got a, one announcement real quick. Uh, there will be no kids' classes tonight, so the kids will have to stay in here. Okay? Yeah. So, kiddos, y'all can come in here. You might like this message yourself. We'll let everybody get kind of settled in. Everybody good? Had a good day? I've had a great day, and I've been looking forward to, to this message. You all pray for Lance. Uh, I talked to him. He's got a water leak uh, at his house, and he is uh, on a track hole, digging across the creek, trying to find a water leak. So <laughs> he said, buddy, I won't be there tonight. He said, I had to rent a track hole, and he said, I've got a, he's probably got several hundred feet of water line going up to his place. And so he's trying to find a water leak. So y'all just keep him in prayer that he'll find it and get it fixed. Because I know it gets dark early, so you ain't got much time to time to work. Yeah. Yeah. Lance, if you read this, see this, Joey said he'd bring a shovel with the new tags on it. That's never been used. Uh, before we get started, I, I want to uh, tell you, give you guys a little update. Uh, Monday. Monday. Of course, everybody knows about the recent storms and everything. And uh, I have to say our church is a giving church. Amen. We're, we're a giving church. And I know sometimes you guys don't hear it and maybe don't see it. That's why I'm telling you what we did. Okay? Uh, Monday, uh, well, this past weekend, the elders decided to help out a few families uh, in, the, in the community that had some tornado damage and stuff. So, uh, myself and Melissa and Lance, uh, along with a friend of mine from work, went to the Calvary area, visited a few homes, presented them with a card, and hopefully that will bless them and help them get back to a speedy recovery. Amen. Amen. And listen, I, I wish we could help more. I really do. I, I pray that we'd be able to continue to help. I know you guys are helping on your own, but I, I, I like to let you guys know that. Because it's not just the elders, it's you guys too. And we all prayed about it, and this is, that's what we wanted to do, is try to help out some people in the community uh, as much as we could. And I, I told them all we had a clothing, clo clothing closets and food pantries. If there's any immediate needs, we'd be more than glad to help them as best we can. Uh, and um, I actually didn't even, I didn't realize it at the time, but I actually work with the emergency manager, emergency management director over all of Marion County I work with him at work so now we got a contact and I, he knows my name and number he knows Lance and Brad because they worked all together at Toyotoma 
And so he knows us now. And I told him, I said, Brian, if there, if there is a need for something at 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, if a, a house burns down, a family needs food, whatever like that, I said, let me know. He said, I'm going to put you in the books. So, you know, and, and of course I watch the news and everything, and, and, it, and it is really neat to see how people have come together in Mayfield and Bowling Green and Calvary and Braversville and just all over the place to come together to help. And I, I think God's really proud of that, those communities. And, uh, you know, at, at that point in time, I think, you know, God is proud of them, but I think God's going to bless them because you can't outgive God. Amen. All right? Amen. So I wanted to share that with you guys, and uh, I'm hoping and praying that we can bless some other families if they need it. Uh, we've been, even been contacting some ones in, in the, the Saloma area over there. We know them. There are a lot of, uh, some of them are actually even some of our Emmaus brothers and sisters. They really are, and I mean very involved. So you just keep, keep them lifted up in prayer. They're really going through some tough times. All right, tonight's message. Here we go. I'm really looking forward to this. How many in here like to receive gifts? Amen. Huh? Come on, I know everybody likes to see gifts. I bet everybody likes free gifts too. Yes. Free gifts, free is better. Free is better. Free is better, right? All right. So tonight, we're going to talk about a gift, the gift, the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. It's not going to be a real long message, I promise you. But it's going to be powerful. I will tell you this. I'm hoping and praying that by the time I get done with this message, it'll answer some questions and and this message is more going to be a teaching message. Okay? I pray that each and every one of you all in here knows the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And if you do, you're going to understand this message. If you don't, I'm hoping you'll receive the Hallelujah. gift. Hey, Amen. Let's go. We got 10 days to Christmas. The last time I was in this up front here it was 25 days if you guys remember it's 10 days to Christmas we're going to talk about the ultimate gift and guess what it's free it's free this ultimate gift we're getting ready to explain to you is free tonight we're going to be in Philippians Deuteronomy Revelations John and Hebrews we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how God gives you all you needs. We're going to talk about how he's forever, he, he will forever be with you. We're going to talk about the true words of God. God's promise. And God's oath. Amen. I'm going to prove to you all that what God says is true. You cannot defile what God says. We're going to back it up. Philippians 4.19 and my God, somebody say, my God, my God, will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by, Jesus Christ, by Christ Jesus. Look, he will supply all your needs, Amen. but he may not supply you with $100 million. He may not supply you with winning the, winning the lottery, but he will supply all your needs according to his riches. Because we were put here on this earth for him. We weren't put on this earth for Joey and, we, and David and whoever else. We were put on this earth for God to build his kingdom and to worship and praise him. According to his riches in, in glory by Christ Jesus, he will supply all our needs spiritually and he will supply them all financially, emotionally, but we have to trust. We have to trust in the Lord Jesus with all our heart, mind, soul, and body. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 31.8 The Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never, never, somebody say never. never. For me, never means forever, Amen. right? Amen. Forever. Remember that word, you'll see it again. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. All right. Some people will leave you. Your friends may leave you. Your parents may leave you. 
your kids may leave you. But the Word of God says He will never leave you. Some people in this world feel alone, and it's a shame that they feel alone in this world. But if they would just grasp Holy Spirit, they would know that He will never leave them. If they fall in love with Him, He'll never leave you. Come on. If He will never leave you, no matter what you do, He's always beside your side. Come on. Listen, I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you're going. And I don't care what you're going to do 10 years from now. My God tells me He will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. And to me, ne- and, and to me never means forever. So as long as I've got life on this earth, He's never going to leave me. The day I accept Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, He's automatically inside of me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. Revelations 21, 5 through 6. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I'm making everything new. Now if he's making everything new, that means we're going to get new bodies. We're going to get new houses. We're going to get new cars. Maybe it might be a horse. I don't know. Whatever we're riding on up in heaven. Angel wings. I don't know. But he's going to make everything new. Then he said to me, Write this down. Listen to this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Trustworthy and true. Everything, where's my Bible? Everything in this book, from front to back, cover to cover, is trustworthy and true. You can't take away from it and you can't add to it. But everything in this book is trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty. Anybody ever get thirsty in here? Boy, I like a good cold shot of ice water. Especially sweet tea. What's my favorite? Look, there you go, right there. I love it. I like green tea too, the diet green tea. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. Without cost tells me it's free. Huh? I like free. I love free. I like free food. Huh? I like free gas, free clothes. Gas in my car, I might add. Without cost from the spring of the water of life. That means to tell me that my God is trustworthy and true. He will give me the the water of life, the spring, the fountain of life. All I have to do is ask. It tells me that he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That means there's nobody else on God's green earth. I know we've always heard that. On God's green earth that is trustworthy and true, that is more powerful than everybody, who's the Omega and and the Alpha, the beginning and the end. Nobody. And he's going to give me all the living water I want. Amen. Here's where it's going to get good. Gooder and gooder. Now some people, some people ask me all the time. Say, Charlie, if I become born again and I mess up, can I lose my salvation? We're getting ready to read this. The next two scriptures, this one and the next slide, I think is going to prove this point. And that's why I said this is going to be more of a teaching. Because I want you all to know, because I'm sure that people ask you this question all the time. People struggle with this. Now, if I'm not living right, and I'm, I'm living like a thug, or I'm living bad, and I'm out doing the things I do, I might need to check myself. I might need to check myself before I wreck myself because I'm not living for God to begin with. Come on. on. Look. You can't be part of the world and be part of God's world. You got to choose. You got to choose. But this scripture right here says in John 10, 28 through 30 says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. This next line, no one, absolutely no one, Not your mama, not your daddy, 
not your sister, not your brother, not your grandmas. No one will snatch them out of my hand. When you're part of God's family, when you're part of God's family, no one can snatch you out of his hand. If his words on the last slide says it's trustworthy and true, then how can they snatch you out of his hand? Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. Again, he says, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And that last word sums it up. I and my Father are one. When we talk about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all one. When God's got a hold of you, no one can snatch you out of their hands. Now I can tell you this, if you're living like a heathen, if you're living like a thug, if you're living in sin, living in sin I can tell you right now, you might want to check yourself. Amen. You might want to check yourself. But I can tell you this, the gift is free. That gift is free. And when you receive that gift, and you know how we get those gifts on Christmas, man, they're all wrapped up. Boy, we're all excited, except around my house, because everybody knows what they're getting. But if you don't know what you're getting, if you don't know what you're getting, that gift's exciting. My voice just cracked. I think I'm going through puberty right now. <laughs> that gift's exciting. I know when I was a kid, I didn't have a clue what I was getting. We was lucky to get anything. But when I went in there as a kid on that Christmas day, Christmas Eve, and I went in there and I got that gift and I didn't know what it was, oh, man, I thought I had $100 million in that little bitty box. And it was probably a toy or a car that I probably broke within 30 minutes after I got it. But I was glad to get that gift. But those gifts, that gift is the most exciting thing on Christmas Day. But when, when Holy Spirit, when Father God come down, when he come down to earth as a human being, come down as Jesus, baby Jesus, to give us that ultimate gift. He had to come here to give us that ultimate gift. We're getting ready to get into it. I and my Father are one. Hebrews 6, 17 through 18. I wanted to put this scripture up in here because, again, people like to test you. People like to tell you, well, how can God say all that? How can God make, let this happen and that happen, this happen, this happen? We know His words are trustworthy and true. We know no one can snatch you out of his hands. Let's read this. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear, very clear to the heirs of what he had promised. If you're an heir to the throne of God, he promises. He promises this. He confirmed it with an oath. An oath is a promise. An oath is a promise. God promised this. By two unchangeable things in which it is, which is the most important thing, it is impossible for God to lie. So I don't care who is out there, who you're witnessing to. If somebody tells you, I don't believe that, I don't believe that, I can't believe God would even say that. It's impossible for God to lie. Amen. Come on now. Hey, it's impossible. God doesn't tell a lie. God doesn't joke around. He don't joke around with his people. If you're part of God's kingdom, he does not lie to you. He does not lead you. And, he, and the word tells us he does not tempt us. He It's impossible for him to lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us, may be greatly encouraged. I don't know about you guys, but I know my God don't lie to me. And I know my God is true. I know that word is true. I believe that word from front to back. But I will tell you this. When I fled to Jesus Christ, my hope was that he's going to hold on to me the rest of my life. I don't have to worry about if God's going to let me go. Now, 
I pray that God will convict your hearts Amen. as he convicts my hearts when I'm wrong. And I think if you're a born again heir of child of God to the throne, I pray conviction on you. When you do something wrong, I hope he convicts your heart so much that you fall to your knees and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Listen. Now that I've gotten and grown closer to God over the years, and, and I still, I'm not where I want to be, but I, w- I want to keep going. Now, as soon as I do something wrong, it hits me like a ton of bricks, man. I feel awful. I mean, I feel, I feel it just come over me. Like, man, I have done messed up big time. I done messed up. And the first thing I do is try to find my quiet place. And I talk to God and say, I repent. I'm sorry. God, forgive me. Show me, Father God. Show me, Father God, the righteous path. Look, I don't want to do the things I did, used to do. I don't want to go back that way. I don't want to go down that road. Because I can tell you right now, back when I was running around, I opened up a lot of gifts that were pretty bad. Huh? I know some of us did. I don't think there's too many in here that didn't open up a bad gift sometime between the ages of 12 and, say, 25 to 30. During that time frame in my life, I opened up a lot of bad gifts. They were bad for my body. They were bad for my marriage. They were bad for my health. They were bad for my kids to even see. Huh? Now, it's up to me to correct that. We all have a choice to make. We can choose a bad gift or we can choose a good gift. God gives us gifts. But there's one gift that's ultimate. It's the ultimate gift. And he promises it to us. It's a free gift. It's a free gift he gives us. The gift of eternal life. When I looked at that gift, I kept telling myself, I'm like, man, there's got to be more to that word gift. So I got to studying scriptures and the Holy Spirit was talking to me and I was praying about it. And, and guess what? I did not do this message at work. I did it at the house in one night and it took me two hours to put it together. That's how in tune I was. I was in tune with the Holy Spirit. Even though there was distractions in my house, I was focused. God is forever true. That's God's gift. God's God's gift is eternal life. Now listen, I I, I speak of these uh, scriptures because I want you guys to, to remember them best you can. If you can't remember them, let me know and I'll give them to you. But it's not for me. It's up to us to go and spread that gift, to give that gift of life, to give that gift of eternal life. Give them a free gift. Look, I can't buy everybody gifts in the world, but that gift is free. It don't cost you no money. It doesn't cost you no money. Look, I tell this to a lot of people. I can't reach the friends you have. I can't reach the friends you all got. I can't reach the friends that you got, Miss Rosie. I can't. Reach the friends you got. But you can. And, and, and the more we get in tune with church, the more we get in tune with the word, then we got, we got opportunities to, to, to spread that word, to spread that gift. That gift is a free gift, an internal life. I don't want any of my friends or any of my enemies, people that maybe not like me too much, I still don't want them to go to hell. Amen. So I want to give them that gift. And I can guarantee you, if they knock on my door and they get me a little chance to step in that door, oh, they I get it to them. Amen. All the time. All the time. Somebody I don't I don't go around and I don't push on nobody. You know? I just kind of do my own thing. But if somebody had a guy come to me the other night or the other day at work, he said, uh, <coughs> he said, Charlie, he said, Man, he said, I know you're praying, man. He said, uh, if you don't mind. He didn't much more get that out, and I said, I'm already doing it. His wife is, is battling breast cancer right now. I don't know if it's one or two, both. And he said, well, I knew you was, and he walked off. He come back a few hours later, back in the shop. and I, but, but don't it make you feel good when somebody comes to you and asks you to pray? Amen. Don't it come good to say, hey, somebody comes up to you and says, hey, what about this and this and this? I'm telling you right now, if somebody asks me a question that I don't know, oh, you can guarantee I'm going to find out. Whether I got to call Joy, John, get in the book, get on the internet, 
whatever I got to do. I'm going to find out this answer because if I don't know, I need to know. Huh? I need to know what those gifts are. But anyway, this guy comes back to the shop after, after that incident. He come back. I said, man, I said, uh, I didn't want you to think I was being rude because I kind of cut him off. Like He was like, hey, man, if you're going to pray, if you got time to pray, I want you to. I want you to. And I'm like, I'm already doing it. I'm already on it. I already knew about it. I already knew about what this lady was going through. You know, and she's a sweetheart. He's a, he's a, he's a good feller. And I'm like, man, I'm already doing it. But I come back and I, I tell him, I said, man, I didn't mean it like that. I said, I just want you to know I, I'm praying for it. And if there's anything I can do, let me know. I'll be the first one to go. So what I'm doing is planting them seeds. I'm planting them seeds. So I can, so he'll say, hey, would you mind coming over to my house? And, oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. You can ask me to come to your house and I guarantee you I'll be there. Don't pass up that opportunity, guys. You can, you can get those gifts. Come on, you can give that free gift of healing. It's not, gift of eternal life is the ultimate gift. But there's more than that gift. There's gift of, of, a, of spirituality, gift of sharing the word, gift of forgiveness, gift of healing. There's all kinds of gifts. Spiritual gifts. The, the Bible tells us about spiritual gifts. Look up gifts. Look up gifts in the Bible. See how many times gifts is mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned a lot. I didn't know how much it was mentioned, but I knew it was mentioned a lot. I always pick out these certain words and I always look up and see how many times it's used in the Bible. And it just amazes me how many times that Father God would inspire these people that wrote the Bible to use certain words. And those words are there to teach us. They're there to teach us. Use those gifts. We love free gifts. And best of all, it's free. It's free. I told y'all this wasn't going to be a very long message. Well, I did good tonight, didn't I? But this is a good teaching message. Listen, again, I'll say, I can't reach the same people you all can reach. Pastor Joey can't reach all the people. We have family. We have friends. We have co-workers. We have cousins. Look for those opportunities to share that gift and you know you don't have to Bible thump them be compassionate and caring about them and then try to spread that word say hey bud we've been talking for a while my father-in-law was the best he was absolutely the best I have ever seen I guarantee you if he didn't know anybody in this church within 10 minutes after talking to you and just saying hey how you doing what do you do da, da, da. hey by the way by the way, do you know the Lord is your personal Lord and Savior? I'm telling you, he was, he was good. He was good. I wish I was that good. I'm not there yet. It takes me a little while. Because, you know, we're all scared sometimes of how people are going to react. But I'm telling you, keep that gift right here in this pocket. And every time you get a chance to give that gift, open that gift of salvation to them. Open that gift of eternal life. Because there's not a person in here that wants to go spend eternity in hell. Mm, not a person at all. I've, heard, I've had, and it's sad, I've heard this statement before. I've never used it, but I've heard people say it. I'd rather spend eternity in hell as to do this or to do that. I've heard that. I've heard that from young people. I've heard it from old people. I'd, well, I'd rather go to hell than, I'm like, no, you don't. No, do you know what that's about? Where are you going? Trying to bobble thump me again. No, I'm not. Read the book. Read the word and, and, and listen to what hell's about. Not even my worst enemy. I don't want to go to hell. Hell is eternal too. It's for eternity. There's no going back. But when I studied this scripture, I kept saying, man, this is a gift. We've got a gift. We've got an ultimate gift right here that we can give for free to our family and friends and relatives and everybody else we come in contact to. I pray that you guys ask for God for boldness tonight. Pray at the altar, at your seat, or even going home. I don't care. Pray God will send somebody in your path. I pray that you'll send, send that God will send, send somebody in your path 
that you could share that ultimate gift with. If you just share John 3.16 with them. Most everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world and all that. You share that with them. And then just ask them, say, hey man. If you, if, you, if you took your last breath on this earth, where would you spend eternity? Most of them will say, well, I hope. Well, I hope. Well, I don't know. Oh, no. The Word tells us it's trustworthy and true. Our Word tells us it will never return void. It tells us in His Word that He always hears everything we ask. It tells us that He will supply all our needs. It tells us. It tells us in that scripture that no one will snatch you out of his hands. Listen, it's as simple as that. I pray that you guys will get into the Word. That is my ambition and goal in 2022. We just had a meeting, didn't I? I told you that. My goal for 2022, and we got, what, just 15 days or so left in this year? My goal is to get more in that word like I've never got into it before. Amen. Listen, if we're going to walk the walk, we need to talk the talk, right? Listen, I had a, guy, I had a lady tell me today. I'll share this story and I'll shut up. I had a lady tell me today, well, drinking one beer won't hurt you. I said, no, it won't. But I said, I can't do that. I can't do that because I didn't say it would ruin my witness because I knew she wouldn't know what I was talking about. But how can I do that if I'm going to go preach the word? How can I do that if I'm not going to be true and trustworthy to my God? Amen. I try to be the best Christian I can be. I'm scared to death to do something wrong. And I still mess up every day. I fall short every day. But I can tell you this. When I do, I know it. When I do... I know not to do it again, or try not to do it again. But this old fleshly desires make me do it. But I tell you guys, I, I, I know time is short. When I look on TV and I see what happened down in Mayfield and Bowling Green, I hear that people lost their babies out of their arms and, and they're missing. They can't find some of them. Listen to me, it scares me to death, that part of it. Because we don't know where they went. We, not, we don't know. If that happened here in Lebanon around our families listen we don't know where our family and relatives are going you know I asked my family I've asked most everyone in my family on my my, my parents and my and my siblings I just ask them do you believe in Lord Jesus Christ and I was like you know most of them will tell me yes I do and I know they do I know they do now their relationship with God may be different than mine but I know in my heart that they believe that and as long as we know that that's the word. That's right. Now, I'm not saying their fruits are where they are. My fruits may not be where I want them at. But I'm going to keep growing in it. I'm never going to look back. Y'all stand to your feet. We're going to play a, we're going to play a song or two. And I hope somebody grab the lights there, Aaron, or somebody. I hope you guys have listened to this message about the gift the gift that keeps on giving look God didn't stop giving this gift he's not going to stop giving this gift till he raptures us out of here until he calls us home till this world is over with this gift is free until we take our last breath listen to me it's the gift that keeps on giving it's been giving it now for 2,000 years or longer right and it's going to keep giving another thousand or two thousand as long as we're here as long as this earth is still turning in this big old orbit Share that gift. Unroll, oh, and open that box and share that gift. Pray for boldness. Pray for boldness. Boldness is huge. I pray for boldness and discernment and wisdom every day. Every day I ask God to give me more boldness, wisdom, and discernment. Because I don't want to see anybody perish. And I know if I can get them on the right track, plant the seed. Holy Spirit going to do the rest. Holy Spirit's going to do the rest. We don't have to we don't have to just keep keep just drilling them with it. If we plant a seed, God God's going to water that seed. He's going to make that gift grow. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord.
we thank you for that ultimate gift, Father. The gift of eternal life. And Father, I pray right now, if there's one person in here right now that does not know what that eternal life, that ultimate gift is, Father, I pray they come to this altar right now. If they're in question, Lord God, if they felt fallen away, Father God, if they have doubt, if they have doubt, Father God, I pray right now in Jesus' name they come to this altar and make the peace with you, Father. That ultimate gift of eternal life, God, we thank you. For everyone being here tonight, we thank you for the ones that are listening, Father. If there's one out there listening right now, God, on Facebook, I pray right now, Lord, that today is the day they receive that ultimate gift, Lord. Unwrap it, Father God. Unwrap, Lord. Unwrap it, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray you will just pour out your spirit on them, Lord, and just overflow in their bodies. God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' holy name, amen.